What's up? How are you guys today? We're gonna take a look at some day of eating shorts, including Abby Sharp, very popular dietitian, the self-proclaimed fat girl that we took a look at last week. Uh, we have this girl that's new, some high protein diet. Uh, this is Freely under her new alias, the Frugivore Diet. Uh, this guy that always does these crazy OMAD one meal a day cheat meals. And that should be plenty. Uh, we haven't spoken about her in a while. But I think the last video was actually when we uh, did the miscarriages. Abby Sharp has had, and I'm not exaggerating, I think six or seven miscarriages. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, personally, like if a dietitian or a nutritionist or, or a doctor or someone I was listening to, if they had that many miscarriages, I feel like there should be a disclaimer at the beginning of every video they make. Oh, by the way, before you take my advice, I, no, I mean, I don't want to say the word, but unfortunately lost seven babies. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of absolutely ridiculously crazy if you think about it. But uh, I mean, I mean, you'd have to be a psycho, uh, right? For that to happen to you and then to give nutrition advice, whatever. I mean. I don't know. Welcome to another realistic non-diet what I eat in a day as a dietitian. Started with my soy milk latte, of course. Soy milk latte. What a great start, bro. Coffee to destroy the adrenals, some soy milk, a little estrogen action, and then, oh, I hope she has some fluoridated tap water. That'll really shut your brain down first thing in the morning and get you anxious. Great combination. I mean, that's kind of what everyone does, right? I mean, I mean you could go into it, but... Yeah, there's a huge difference between having this versus having a high quality organic coffee with high quality organic dairy products plus filtered water. Like, to, hypothetically, same cup of coffee, but realistically, the ingredients that go into it are a world of a difference. Of course, then I made some oatmeal with some protein powder in there, added some peanut butter for healthy fats, lots of berries, some hemp hearts on top. Uh, it's kind of like a normie breakfast. Uh, we talk about going organic a lot. Basically, if you're not eating only organic foods, the agrochemical, herbicide, pesticide, fungicide, insecticide, pollutant content is so high that it, it could be damaging your body and, and impairing your organ function. Peanut butter, it, probably one of the worst fats, high in mold, poor omega-6 ratios, usually uh, pretty toxic fat. You could go, I mean, macadamia nut butter is the best, but pretty much anything else is better than peanut butter. Oats. I have personally myself, but I make sure they're organic oats. Nothing wrong with throwing some fruit on there as long as it's organic. And stuff like hemp hearts, hemp seeds, I mean, it, not actually healthy for you. If you enjoy the flavor of something, yeah, you could sprinkle it on there. But you might as well be sprinkling chocolate on there. It's, if anything, healthier. At least you're getting some minerals. Pop. It is so satiating and so yummy. Love hey, how come you're not showing the second cup of coffee, Miss Sharp? Love it. For lunch, I did a sourdough sandwich with some pesto, lots of avocado for healthy fats, egg, chicken, put some cheese on there. We loaded it up. It was a big sandwich. And so that looks pretty good. At least, you know, you got sourdough, you got plenty of protein on the sandwich. Maybe it's not the best quality protein. You know, did you use the preferred ingredient choices when making the pesto? I'm not that much of a fan of avocado, but hey, at least there's a decent amount of healthy animal protein in the meal. And I serve that with hummus, some carrots, and some strawberries. I mean, I mean, carrots are too high in beta carotene for most people. You shouldn't be eating them on a daily basis. Hummus, uh, olive oil, chickpeas, not as good as like the white bean puree I make. Still okay. Strawberries, if you go organic, it's not the end of the world. Uh, a few critiques here in this meal would be good. Poppy enjoyed it too. For dinner, we ordered in, I had a vegan udon noodle soup and some edamame. I'm obsessed with edamame. I ate the whole thing. It's Ooh, am I allowed to uh, talk trash edamame, about udon noodles when I eat them every day? Am I allowed to do that? I, I mean, if you just put a few slices of steak in there, it could be healthy. I mean, edamame is just soy. You don't want to be eating that. It's just soy. People try to say like, oh, soy isn't that bad. But, you know, there's a huge difference between choking down soy milk and edamame every day versus having a little soy sauce with your sushi. Uh, udon noodles, you guys know I have them every day. Uh, it's a great healthy starch source if you're using a high quality noodle and depending on the vegetables and stuff you put in there. But again, you want there to be a base of animal protein in every meal. At least, you know, three, four, five, six ounces of animal protein, quality grass or beef preferably with everything you're having to give your body the nutrition. 
edamame. I'm obsessed with edamame. I ate the whole thing. It's so good. And for a bedtime snack, I dove into the Lay's family size bag of ketchup chips. With and for I, I mean, like, what do you guys want me to say about this? Oh, and I think I actually sent out an email today, or it's going to be Monday, uh, that we basically have to uh, throw out all of our potato chips that we made on the foods website, Frankie Syringe Foods, the coconut oil and Wagyu beef fat potato chips, because there's no demand. I mean, I wish we could have got the price lower. That might have made it more successful. But, uh, you know, despite us having the only healthy organic potato chip on the market, uh, like, I mean, it's because I'm shadow banned and censored and stuff. We don't really sell that much. But these types of chips are made with highly rancid, oxidized vegetable seed oils, just straight up poison to your cells. They use regular conventional potatoes that are sprayed with crap, and they usually put a bunch of chemical flavors and preservatives, and not to mention the salt they use is low-quality salt. For a bedtime snack, I dove into the Lay's family-sized bag of ketchup chips with some cottage cheese, cereal, and fruit. It's just low-quality stuff. You know, it looks like Chex Mix. It looks like Chex Mix. Uh, but cottage cheese, dairy, conventional, not the end of the world, slightly estrogenic, not the highest-quality protein. Uh, cereal, usually very high in iron filings. The, the cereal is fortified, which is the problem. It has a lot of synthetic vitamins and st synthetic minerals that will damage your body. And again, the fruit you want to go organic. Overall, honestly, seems like a, a standard American diet of someone trying to be healthy. But you know, if you eat low-quality foods like this uh, without enough animal protein and animal fat, you're never really going to feel good or be healthy and have a healthy body composition. But uh, unfortunately, a lot of these influencers are just... Uh, you know, at least when they get to that level of popularity, hey, you know, when you get 700,000 subscribers and you're getting, you know, hundreds of thousands of views, usually they stick with some mainstream stuff. Is she taking Ozempic? Last time on the Ozempic Diaries. Hey guys, it's Jen checking in here. All right, maybe she's not, but anyway. Apparently she's promoting Ozempic, which I mean, it's completely ridiculous, but we know she's getting a check from someone. Maybe a deja vu or we'll see it. Back girl again. By the way, I don't know if that song is going to copyright this, so we might be omitting a section here of the fat girl. So I do apologize if we have to do that. Breakfast bowl, Jimmy Dean. <laughs> this girl's hilarious. Breakfast bowl at ranch. Oh my god, this girl is crazy, dude. She has a Jimmy Dean breakfast bowl and she adds ranch and hot sauce. Oh my god, there's something messed up with her palate, dude. If you if you have like a highly processed Jimmy Dean bre breakfast bowl that has god knows how many seasonings and chemicals and flavorings in it and then you add ranch and Cholula and bacon pieces. Oh my, that's funny. That's fine. I'm not going to even address that or explain why it's bad for you because it's so comically ridiculous. Bacon bit. Looks weird as hot, but it's yummy. Oh my god, dude. Holy, I can't. I feel bad for her cell. Her cells are her cells are crumbling. They're wobbling around in her body. Pineapple. The most elite fruit. Might be the only reasonable thing she's ever eaten in a day of eating. Salmon bowl. It's like it's like her meals are almost passable, right? She's got salmon with rice and green beans. Okay, not too bad. And then let's see how she ruins it. Okay, sriracha mayo could it could be worse. It could be worse. For that meal, you could omit the green beans and just salmon and rice would be okay. But usually, salmon is farmed, heavily polluted, not that great for you. I mean, we're not, we're not going to get into, you know, is the rice organic? What type of water is being used to make the rice? Because we got much bigger problems in this diet. What's this? A pizza? And salmon. Cauliflower barbecue chicken pizza. Cauliflower barbecue chicken pizza. So this is an example of something that people think is healthy, but it's not really. Hey, you go cauliflower, You maybe that's a better choice for the crust than just regular flour. But chicken is a very unhealthy protein. I would argue that just having... A plain slice of pizza, plain slice of pizza and omitting conventional feedlot chicken is probably healthier. With ranch. And <laughs> of course she puts ranch on it. All right, we already g we gave you guys the lowdown on the potato chips already. Uh, th these might be slightly better than Lay's, but still those same issues, vegetable seed oils, etc.
All your food looks so yummy. Don't ever stop being you. Don't let the stupid jealous people make you feel less because you're... Oh, my God. How does that food look good at all? Uh... Hold on, bro. Maybe should we check the Abby Sharp comments? Realistic and healthy and... All right, just a bunch of nonsense. I mean, she's eating regular normie stuff, so who cares? Bro, if anything, this girl deserves... Like, like, I mean, I mean to be honest, if anyone deserves like a little bit of backlash, you're putting ranch on your breakfast bowl. Like, <laughs> doesn't get much worse than that. All right, let's see, let's see how this girl farts all day. What I eat in a day to get hundred grams of protein. I meal prep blueberry chia pudding parfait, so I had one of those fist. First, I made the chia pudding and let it set in the fridge. I topped it with blueberry Greek yogurt mixture, granola, and fresh blueberries. Okay, so I, at least she added some actual real yogurt to the fake chia yogurt. One serving of this contains 28 grams of protein. For lunch, I made oven-baked feta pasta. I used lentil pasta since it's high. Is this like one of those girls that is afraid to eat meat? Instead, she just eats blocks of cheese for every meal and insane amounts of dairy? I mean, this is just a block of cheese. Is it? Is that cheese? Is that the... In protein. This is one of my favorite pastas since it's super creamy and full of flavor and gets you 30 grams of protein. I mean, I can't imagine, uh, you know, what her room smells like all day with that much dairy, but uh, it could be worse, you know. At, le at least there's some animal nutrition in the breakfast and, and the dairy in the lunch. And then she has some, you know, she mm -hmm. has some grains in the diet, right? So it's not, it's somewhat balanced and healthy, you know, it's not that bad. I mean, I... There's definitely some nutrient imbalances, and we're definitely lacking some things here and there. But uh, you know, once you include a good amount of animal protein, that kind of with that B vitamin intake and minerals and all that stuff, it, it rules out a lot of negatives. Grams of protein. For snack, I prep chocolate protein cookies. These cookies are fudgy, chocolatey, and so yummy. I had two of these cookies per snack, and they contain about 13 grams of protein. For dinner, I made. I mean, the cookies. Yeah, just putting protein powder in regular cookies. It's not a bad thing. You know, I like it because they're calorically dense. You're giving your body just basic stuff it needs, minerals, carbs, and fats. The downside might be, you know, chocolate can be a little inflammatory for some people, high in histamine, high in mold. High, uh, depends on how you sleep. I made Caesar salad wraps and they turned out so good. Hope you tried the recipe. So if anything, this is the worst meal she's had all day just because of the lack of fat and quality protein and nutrition. At least conven like conventional dairy compared to conventional chicken, it's not nearly as bad. So, I mean, you have lettuce wraps like this every meal, you'll be falling apart. Because uh, if you're eating lettuce for anything besides enjoying it or a salad, possibly, you know, the Caesar dressing had egg yolk and anchovy and that maybe added a little bit to it, although it's unlikely. I don't really want to give the organic spiel or, or go too much into detail on everything, but uh, the main thing that she can do with her diet is just overall improve the quality. So, you know, get the grass-fed dairy, get the organic granola for breakfast. Uh, she can do just higher quality ingredients, organic pasta for lunch. You know, is she using high quality ingredients in the cookies as well, like butter from the farm? And then same thing with this uh, this Caesar thing. Like that tortilla, you, know, you got to make these grains and use the highest quality stuff you can find. Remove the seed oils, go organic, make sure there's enough high quality protein. Let's see what this uh, nutcase is up to, right? Here's what I eat in a day to overcome binge eating disorder. I've also lost over 40 pounds. Breakfast. I mean, you got binge eating disorder because your body isn't getting nutrients and you're only eating foods that aren't satisfying in the nutrient requirements. It's, it's what happens to a lot of uh, girls that have and, and guys that have eating disorders in even in normal situations. They're just eating this standard American diet crap that's not nourishing their body and uh, it's, it's never suppressing their appetite. But if you look, I mean, how long has this girl been doing the dietary stuff? Like 20 years or something and she still has binge eating issues and she's still trying to overcome them? Like, get a hint. This will be a bunch of these amazing red deca bananas that we grew ourselves. We did a video on anti-nutrients in bananas, and they might actually be the worst fruit for your gut health because they're so high in anti-nutrients. I always have about 800 mils of carrot juice. I batch juice and freeze them at the start of the... 
Oh, goodbye to her liver. Oh, God. Week. Honestly, the best supplement ever. Me and Mom, we got... Carrot juice is, is very high in nutrients relative to the caloric amount. So it's just very unbalanced. Some salad from smoothies. For dinner, I made some... Is that the only reasonable thing she's ever eaten? Just rice balls? Because having just high volumes of low calorie food, it's not giving your body anything. I don't say it enough, but vegetables, lettuce, all that stuff really serves no purpose in the diet. You're not giving your body caloric nutrition. You're not giving your body available vitamin or mineral nutrition. There, the soluble fiber in it isn't detoxing. There's not like, it, there's too many flavonoids and carotenes in it. It's not healthy for you. It's rabbit food, dude. Hey, if you make sauerkraut, that's a different ball game, but. For dinner, I made some huge, super satisfying veggie stuff burritos with these burger patties. These turned out amazing. Look at I mean, this is probably similar to lunch. You're just having a lot of very high volume, low calorie vegetables that aren't giving your body what it needs. A big this is. Calories and animal protein. That's what your body needs. Grains and meat. There's no way you can get your mouth around that. That's the biggest one. That is bigger. Let me try. The biggest burrito. Oh, yeah. Oh, all these guys look the same, bro. They're so out there. It's so weird. Like, dude, some guys will do anything for coochie. It's actually ridiculous. But, you know, filling your stomach up with low nutrition vegetables is like being a gorilla, except gorillas are equipped with, uh, gorillas are equipped with the digestive organs to be able to assimilate nutrients from the food. Oh, you dry. <laughs> Whoa. Mm. Bro, in like in 2029 or something, they're going to have surgeries where vegans can get gorilla organs transplanted into their body and they can just sit in the forest with their giant guts all day. <laughs> if you want to eat unlimited calories, lean up and overcome binging, then I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching through Instagram to show you how. Link in my bio. How to <laughs> how to develop uh a binge eating disorder, you mean? Because that's basically what you're doing. You're just not eating foods you consider unhealthy. Burrito. I'm a fruit-based nutritionist. Fruit-based nutrition. Uh, I mean, to be. I mean, I don't know why she's calling herself a fruit-based nutritionist when most of her diet was lettuce. Oh God, what are the comments on this? Probably she probably deletes most of the comments. Yeah, who who knows who's still with her at this point? Now we got this guy. What's he up to? Here's everything I ate today. I fasted 18 hours this day and in the morning went to Costco to pick up a few things and was sure to grab a rotisserie chicken while I was there. To, to me, I mean, this guy does a lot of content and every time I see it, he's just doing the fasting and then binging on some conventional commercial stuff. When I got home, I broke my fast with some of the fresh biltong that I'd gotten in St. Augustine at the Fresh Market Island. Then. We have a uh, biltong on the foods website still, and we should have jerky available this week. Can't complain about that. For lunch, I was having half the rotisserie chicken that I picked up at Costco along with some kimchi. But, but, but dude, to go from beef biltong to a Costco rotisserie chicken is uh, a bit of a, I wouldn't say it's a step down. I would say it's like falling down the entire flight of stairs. I was having lunch with my assistant coach, Mike. We had filmed the Costco grocery haul video and worked on some client check-ins in the morning. I love that I'm going to be able to help more people now by bringing on Mike as my first assistant coach. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just low-quality, conventional, crappy protein. There's not much more to say. Coach. A few hours later, I had a Fairlife chocolate protein shake. For dinner, I was cooking the sirloin steaks that we... Is this guy, like, hired by Costco? <sighs> Dude. Pick up at Costco, and I got to try my new Chicard tenderizer. I found out Bro, it's it's grain fed beef. The cow is basically dying and falling apart. How could you possibly need to tenderize the meat anymore? Now, that's how Texas Roadhouse gets their sirloin so tender, so I wanted to give it a shot. Oh hey boys! Are we heading down to Texas Roadhouse to get us some grade A Angus prom beef from the finest corn and soy fueled feedlots in America? Carrie and I then had a little cheese board where I just had a few pieces of each kind of cheese to try. I was keeping an eye on my portions for sure. I cooked the steaks on the grill and to go with it, we got these Brussels sprouts in the air fryer. The steaks came out very tender and super flavorful. I'll definitely eat more sirloins at the house in the future thanks to the jacquard. Problem with uh, even conventional animal foods, 
especially eggs, pork, and, and chicken, the, the omega-6 just stimulates your appetite. And this even happens with the beef too. The omega ratios in the beef are thrown off enough that um, it causes you to eat more and more and more past what your natural appetite would. When, when, I, when I had my surgery in California, the, the grass-fed beef in the supermarket out there was like so disgusting. It was horrible. So I did. I was buying grain-fed steaks out there, but like the the flavor of the steak wasn't that good on its own. So I would always marinate them in like a carne asada marinade. But I mean, it just made it like hyper palatable. And I, I was eating like a pound of steak per meal, which I shouldn't have been doing. But I mean, I mean we've done a lot of videos in the past on grain-fed versus grass-fed, the negatives of grain-fed beef. I think the video is titled Grain-Fed Beef Will Make You Fat and Flaccid. And I don't even know how, how much into detail I've gotten on the conventional chicken and pork just because it's so it's so horrible from you it's not even close like even carnivore diet advocates don't recommend you eat like rotisserie chicken and and regular bacon and stuff but hey look i i this is mostly carnivore right it looks like he was carnivore the whole day right he had biltong he had rotisserie chicken uh he had sirloin steaks and he had a fair life protein shake um, and I noticed on social media, like now it's carnivore month and, and people trying to make a comeback with the carnivore diet. I guess the, the animal food sales have gone down. I, I mean, I think this guy used to be keto and then he switched to carnivore. I don't know what, what his deal is, but I see him eat burgers and stuff too. So I don't know. And one thing worth mentioning and not him necessarily is a lot of these guys have access to uh, performance enhancing drugs like TRT, testosterone, steroids, which when you take on this type of diet, it offsets a lot of the negatives. Because normally, if, if you're eating that stuff, you know, your hormones are going to be shot, your sleep's going to be shot, you're not going to feel good, you're going to have low energy. But if you just, you know, pin a little testosterone, you feel a lot better. Um, you know, when we when we had the when we did the blood work a few years ago, and I was able to get my testosterone like to so it was something crazy like three thousand from doing the the, the testicle supplements. I haven't actually been able to replicate that again. I was able to do it slightly, like I got a, I got a few hundred points up, but um, may, maybe, I don't know, maybe it has to be like a higher volume, but I, I'm going to do some more experiments in the next few weeks because I wanted to replicate that again. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, hopefully you guys like these little day of eating critiques, but I think this video has already been way too long, so we'll wrap it up. If you guys have any uh, videos you would like me to watch, uh, please let me know. But you can go to frank com where you can support me through all of my legitimate small businesses. It's funny, bro. I like go like say, hey, support small business, Frank East Range Meat, and people be like, oh, I like Costco more. Like, okay, dude, when 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 Costco when Costco gets rid of all their beef and they're making you eat soy and green, don't come crying on my farm, buddy. But on there, guys, we have the meat website, the foods website. Every There's a lot going on. Check out the websites, all the unique products. Uh, we'll do a vlog tomorrow. Uh, you guys get to watch me throw out all my potato chips. <laughs> guys, guys, I, I've, I've lost it at this point. I really, I really, I'm really over it. I do not care at all. It's whatever.